All right, Coach, so the MIAA, once again, uh, should be a tough conference. It always is in volleyball. What are your thoughts on the league as a whole heading into 2016? League as a whole is always a, a tough, rugged MIAA conference. A lot of good teams. That's no news, no surprise. Uh, at a personal level, I don't expect anything new or different uh, for this 2016 season as well. Lots of good teams. I think we ended up the season as a conference having four teams, in the top 15, 16 or so in the nation. And that's not to mention there are several other great teams, some of which actually could have easily been uh, ranked top 25 as well. So uh, the good and the bad is it will be a battle again for everybody, a lot of teams, and us included, uh, hopefully in that mix as well. Uh, when you have so many teams that are ranked nationally, I think it's tough on 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 day to day and match to match basis, conference matches. But I also think it makes all of us, uh, these teams in this conference, uh, get better and better and better. And I think we've seen that over the years. Uh, we have, like I said, a lot of teams that have continued to keep getting better, and a lot of teams have been able to stay there uh, year after year after year. In your time here, you've brought UCO up a notch each level. Last year, winning the regular season title as the best team in the MIAA. Uh, what do you think needs to be done with your team to get over the hump and win the postseason tournament as well? I think we need to continue getting better. <laughs> uh, as, as simple as that sounds, uh, it's just as, as tough, like I just said, uh, because of how our conference is, is made up. Uh, some great, great teams, all of them. You know, there's not a single one night off. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're playing uh, a team that you know may not be in the top four, five, six. It's 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 a great competition, and uh, it's very typical for you know teams that are considered top teams to lose and drop matches to other teams. So from that perspective, we need to continue improving. Uh, you know, we've we've done good in the previous four consecutive seasons. Record-wise and winning-wise, uh, I think we also should start measuring our success not simply about records but also about value adding to our program. And I think uh, sometimes, or a lot of times, they go hand in hand. But uh, the value that we continue adding through our athletes that we're bringing in and, and through the improvements that these athletes uh, are, are experiencing, I think we're contributing toward making our program a better program. Uh, long run, regardless of, you know, is it a number one finish, number two finish, or so. We dive into your program a little more, and, and you have a group of seniors who uh, played very big roles, obviously, as juniors last year. What do you uh, expect from them, from that group of girls this year? And and just tell us a little bit about how much they mean to your team. Well, the, the four seniors, uh, uh, they're, they're special. I mean, all the athletes are special. The four seniors are special because they came obviously together, there are no transfers or anything like that. Uh, they all have played and have contributed to our uh, team's successes in the previous three seasons. Uh, like I said, all four of them have been involved playing every single season of the preceding three. And then it's a special season for them because it's, it's a senior year, it's their last eligibility year. So definitely from those four returners, we're expecting, again, good contribution, uh, solid contribution. I think they offer quite a bit of uh, smart and maturity on how they approach the game. I think they identify well with our style from a coaching perspective, uh, what we want exactly in details and how we want it. And it's always nice to have that from your athletes. And then we have, in addition to the uh, four returners, you know, captain, Allison Barr, a lot of great experience in the middle, have a returning All-American who's been setting for us uh, heavily and we've relied on her setting expertise and experience, Katie Davies. Uh, and then we have Michaela and Bonnie who have both contributed uh, considerably on our team's successes, like I said. Uh, then we have four other returners who are, are not seniors but are just as crucial to this team's uh, success. You know, Taylor Bevis is a returning left side for us. It's the freshman of the conference, so a lot of pressure uh, there from a perspective of 
having to carry so much. I think Taylor will be doing great. Uh, she handles it pretty well. Uh, did amazing last year as a freshman, and I think her experience has got even better. Uh, we'll have uh, Ijam and Jenje returning as well, uh, potentially changing positions some. She contributed on the right side. We'll have to see what would be best for her this year. I uh, have Elizabeth Boyd and then Jordan Spence, both players who contributed Elizabeth to a lesser extent because of some injuries that she's been battling, but uh, Jordan had an amazing year as a freshman. And traditionally we've always relied quite a bit on freshmen and, and I suspect this year may not be different, we just don't know where and when yet until we start our practices in two days and then see what, what the best fit is where. You also bring in a couple of new faces uh, that are that are upperclassmen, and uh, and you, what what kind of role do you expect them? If you're if you're relying on freshmen, you're probably relying on these num newcomers as well. Definitely, I think I think uh, we, we have six that are coming in, and uh, three of those six are freshmen, and then three are upperclassmen, like you said, like you mentioned. So, I do like at least on paper, like coaches say, I do like how. Uh, the six newcomers, you know, are not all six freshmen, so they bring more experience. Uh, all three of them have played at their respective levels and schools uh, previously, so they definitely have game experience, not just game smarts or, or IQ for the game. Uh, Fulani, uh, coming in as a senior, hopefully she will also provide leadership, but also provide experience in the court that she's had and that she has shown previously. Same for uh, McKenzie Five coming as a setter position and maybe even back row uh, contributions, and then Alexis uh, coming and you know being a multi-position player, I think would be pretty good for us from that perspective. Good. We didn't say you can cut it if anything about the three freshmen that are coming. Yeah, you know, I'll put it all together. So, you know, let's let's talk a little more about the freshmen. And you last year you bring in a good class, and you have the conference freshman of the year. So, not that you necessarily are expected to repeat that with a new freshman, but you you mentioned relying on your freshmen. So, let's let's talk about the the group that you have, the the new faces that you have. Sure. I mean, as part of the six that I just mentioned in the previous question, there are three freshmen as well who. You know, we've we've had traditionally freshmen come in and play. Uh, we would hope that be the case again. Uh, as coaches, from coaching perspective, we always want everybody to be ready. Uh, be that game-wise or attitude-wise. Uh, the three freshmen coming, uh, two positions uh, that they're contributing and, and hopefully helping with. Uh, one would be on the defensive end, having Dominique and Mehana, uh, both coming as a freshman. Uh, hopefully they'll contribute, hopefully they'll be fighting for a DS position or even libero position. Uh, having lost, you know, a great libero last year as a team, I think we'll need a lot of help in that department. And then Lindsay on the outside slash right side, hopefully will contribute as well uh, as need be. So we're, we're optimistic about our freshmen and our other uh, newcomers as much as we are about our returners. Uh, we just need to get in the you know, court. I know everybody, it's that time of the year, everybody's itching to start practicing and coaches, players, and see where those ships fall and, and what would be the best, you know, uh, six together. Your, your tournaments before you get really started, you, you have the tournament at UCO. Uh, last year you went to Florida one time. and uh, How do you feel about before you get into the tough MIAA, the schedule you try to put together to prepare for that? Uh, it's a good question actually it's it's we feel somewhat confident actually I think you know ultimately we put the schedule together so I hope we like it uh, I think we have a good mixture of, of teams and styles as well as in region versus out of region competition which as we know it's pretty important uh, with the system that division two uses with the regionalization system so we feel we have quite a few matches that are considered regional matches for us, have a few exceptions in there, but at the same time we also feel that uh, we're going to get enough uh, good quality teams. We have several, you know, in our second tournament of the season, after the opening one, we have uh, 
several teams who rank regionally on their respective regions that will get to play. So I think even from a quality perspective, uh, we have a good mesh uh, of, of teams that not only help our schedule uh, strength-wise and wins and losses potentially for in-season competition, but also help in other categories playing other regionally ranked opponents and ultimately get us as, as ready as we can get uh, for the MIAA schedule and, and having three weekends there at a personal level I like it a lot better than I used to be previously where we had two weekends and then we jump in into our conference play right away.